Now, it was one of the most swinging events we've ever been invited to, and it has been well covered in the press, but we thought you'd like to hear the trip and the press conference for yourself. So all aboard for the highlights of that press conference in true British Rail style. We've been touring for quite a while, actually. The best part of it has been from touring, and also we disappeared to record the album for uh, quite a few months. Basically, we're just emerging now. Just finished the album and straight onto the tour. That's why we've been away. Really. We've used some guest musicians, but very uh, sparingly. They're not uh, session musicians, they're friends coming in to play in the studio. Basically, uh, use more live playing, less computer. Try to get more of a performance out. It was a problem. We haven't had time to rehearse all the new stuff, actually, because we went straight from recording onto the tour. We don't want to start doing too many of the new songs. As the tour goes on and the album comes out, people will know the songs yeah. and we'll add more uh, as we go along. It took us a while to get back in shape, basically, in the studio and to you know, get it going. So we had a rough patch during the middle of the recording session. Basically, the reason we said England is our working place and also where we live, because Norway is in our home. That's where our families are background, so obviously we can never erase it. Before, the uh, collaboration would usually be we'd, we'd write things beforehand separately and then come together and put it together. Whilst uh, in a, uh, at a couple of instances, in this record at least, it's been more of a spontaneous writing effort as well. Things have happened when we've been together and we've actually sat down all three of us to write. You know. I think our audience is growing up uh, with us as well. And I think when you're growing up, tend to be a little more inhibited about screaming your head off in concerts. The dates are set until June. And from there on, we have a little break. And then we, we, uh, yeah. then we start going into uh, um, Canada, America, and South America. John, a very expensive meal. I went and searched the exclusive interview and got as far as the dressing room, but was stopped by two big bouncers, and I asked them what qualifications you needed to be a security man to the world's most pursued band. 6'3", beautiful, good-looking, handsome, 15 four on a good day. All those words don't describe me, but they sound good on radio. <laughs> yeah, we look after our heart. It's not necessarily to be big. It helps, I suppose, at certain times, but it's got to be a bit diplomatic and whatever. Talk to people. We never like to use the word bouncer. We're security, we're bodyguards. You, some people do train, some people don't. Um, Dave is an ex-boxer. I've been in the army, we've done bits and pieces. There are people who go and train. What it boils down to is to become security for bands. It's not how good you are or how hard you can hit. It's really been able to get on with people and obviously get on with the people you're working with because you work so close with the band. You're on the road for nine months of the year. You're traveling in the same bus, sleeping in the same hotels. You're practically living together. Sometimes the band, I just had an interview, I just had a press conference, and you've heard about some of the questions they've been asked. They're in the music business. They're not in the business of politics. They're not in the business of government. One person asked them about Northern Army. We're in to make music. The boys entertain everybody of all walks of life. And they're interested in what's going on in the world. They can't help it, and it's not their fault. But journalists come along and ask them questions. And they ask them stupid, silly questions. Yeah, average age groups for a hard is from sort of 15 years old to the age of 20. Well, now, last night at a gig, there was a lot of older guys, I would say, you know, early 20s, that sort of thing. I would say that the girls have still got the edge on it, although there are definitely more guys coming to see them now and definitely enjoying the music. I stand in front of the speakers on the stage and it's not the music of the boys that gets my ears, it's the screaming of the fans. You get girls come up saying that a lot of strange things to you. You do it with every band you work with. It's just that uh, the way things are at this day and age, it's like playing Russian roulette with five bullets in a gun. And girls climbing up drain pipes in hotel rooms. But being determined to get past them, I ended up running through the kitchens with Martin and all the ladies were pointing and there he is, there he is, through the deep fat fryers. And he'd paid for the whole trip, so I asked Martin what he made of the whole day's proceedings. You sit there with all this you're supposedly aggressive journalists and you can't get one question out of them. Everybody's more shy than you are, aren't they? Well, yeah, they should be, so, <laughs> for their own good. <laughs>